Because the camera not ready. Yet. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> Can I get the four seconds back, please? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. okay? Good. All right. Okay. <clears throat> Good evening. Um, I'm here today to talk about hooks, um, and uh, the title of my talk is uh, "Hooks All About Render." Okay, so what the, the, the basic premise of this is um, basically my personal opinion on why I think what's so cool about hooks, all right? Uh, I don't have a bio slide because I was having like fear about not making the time. So uh, I'm just going to go straight into it, but my slides don't move. <coughs> okay. Uh, Right, in the beginning we had class components, okay? We still have them, but uh, in, in the beginning there were class components. And class components are, are great, right? Um, they let us do a lot of things, namely uh, manage state, okay? So you can't, previously before hooks, you couldn't, you couldn't do anything with state um, in a functional component. So that makes hooks, uh, sorry, that makes class components pretty good because, uh, well, state's really important, right? Uh, in fact, they were so good that, that we got wonderful diagrams like this explaining exactly how they work. Um, there's all this good stuff like constructor, show component update, get derived state from props. There's this big thing called render. Uh, there's component did update and, and, and all this stuff, which is actually like not that good, right? Because you've got to know, most of the time you've got to know what all, all of these things do. Um, you might think it's good because uh, you know, it makes you sound smart when you know what each of these things do. Um, but, but to be honest, none of these are directly related to what we're trying to achieve. None of this is directly related to, to UI. It's essentially an implementation detail of React itself. And it, it, it's a life cycle, right? It's part of the life cycle. And the life cycle is something to do with the component, not really to do with UI. Right, we need to know about it in order to achieve the things we want to achieve in the UI, but ultimately it's an implementation detail. So we had class components, um, but we also had function components, right? And, and these were different from class components. You couldn't do state, you couldn't do, you didn't get access to all these lifecycle methods. So things were a lot simpler, right? You just lived in the now. It's, it's a pure, it's a, in a sense, a more pure function um, where you get some props and you return some UI. Okay, so to make the point of this talk, uh, I want to introduce a, a side effect. So side effects are quite common in React. Um, typically, it's, it's something that happens, you know, that, that, that reaches outside the, the component. So let's look at this side effect. Uh, and I've... Uh, I've implemented this as part of a, a class component. So there's a component did update the lifecycle method and inside we compare the props and this is a slightly contrived example just to make the point. Uh, there's a timeout and inside the timeout after five seconds we, we do something. And this thing that we do, we need to pass it uh, a value from the props which we do uh, with this.props.something. Uh, I've, I've kind of adapted this slightly from the uh, from overreacted IO the blog of our uh, you know collective leader um, <laughs> but I've changed it a little bit so um, so so this is the side effect okay now what's what's like not not so good about this um, well we have this timeout right and basically after five seconds we we do this side effect and we pass it a value from, from the props. The problem with this is that this may have, have unintended consequences because this.props.something is always pointing to the latest version of props, right? Which may not be the version of props that was around at the time that the timeout was started. Now, this may be desirable or this may be undesirable, okay? Um, but the point is you have to know. You have to know about this. You have to know about the mutable this you have to, you, if you didn't know, you'll probably have a slightly painful experience uh, knowing about it and learning what, what, what it is. Um, 
So the description of everything is spread out. And what is everything? It's like what's going on in, in this component is spread out. It's spread between like there's this function you want to call, which is inside a set timeout. Uh, okay, we can't get away from that. That's inside this, this thing called component did update, which you have to know about. And component update is like next to a render. What I mean by that is it's a sibling method, right? So somehow there's a relationship between these two things, which we also have to know about. Um, this whole thing is inside a, a class component, which we think we know about. But then there's this, this value somewhere, which seems to be not attached to anything. So all in all, like, I, I, I'm guessing that it's not confusing for us because we're at a React meetup. We know all about this. But uh, it's kind of a little bit unintuitive, if you ask me. So enter hooks. Now I'm going to re-implement this with uh, the use effect hook. And in my opinion, this is a lot simpler. Um, now, you do have to understand use effect. So yes, there is some kind of, it's not like you look at it and you just know what's going on. Um, but what we have here is essentially, uh, we have use effect and every time props dot something changes, we uh, run this side effect. Now, one of the big differences here is that um, because there's no this, the value of props dot something is captured at the time that this timeout is started. So you don't get, it's a lot more predictable, right? In fact, um, if you look at what's going on, there's a lot less going on compared to what I described previously with the, the, the state of everything. There's no lifecycle methods. There's just this use effect, which has a, an argument which lets you, uh, which lets you define a, a piece of data that this effect depends on and reruns when, when, cha when it changes. Um, there's no lifecycle methods. There's just the component body and the hook, right? There's no this anymore, right? There's, there's, it's just the, the props which, which belong to the component. Um, and the changing prop values are captured by the component in a much more predictable fashion, meaning that when, you, when, when this line runs, um, the set timeout line runs, whatever value was there at that time, whether it be props or state, is, is captured. So I, I'm not necessarily saying that like, this, is, this, this makes your life easier, because you might actually want the latest props. But it is, to me, at least a bit more predictable. So, um, so, so if you look at what's going on here, there's, it's basically it's, everything is just the component, right? Everything is owned by the component. Um, and what is the component really? What is the functional component? Well, if we, if we think about this question in terms of a class component, then a functional component is really like just the random method part, right? So it's like we're doing everything inside the random method. So really the component is the random method and therefore what hooks does is make everything just all about the render. That's my last slide. Oh. <laughs>